clap your hands where you are and just begin to give the God Almighty some praise. Come on and give him your highest worship. Come on, dig a little deeper and let him know you appreciate him and that you love him. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of the honor. Come on, he never stops working for us. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you this morning. We give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In this movement of worship, amen, I believe that somebody's heart has become tender as we remember how good God is. And I don't want to wait until the end of the service to do this, but can I talk to those that are online and those that are in the sanctuary that may not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And as we sing this song, you're reminded about how good he is. You're reminded that he never stops working. Yeah. He's never stopped working for you. And the greatest commitment you can do, the greatest thank back, the greatest thank you is to receive him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So is it okay that we don't wait to the end? Because I feel in my spirit, God is tugging on somebody's heart right now. You in your kitchen, yeah, that almost so cold. And you heard the song and something inside of you reminded you how awesome God is. Uh, you may be in your car, you're watching on your cell phone. You may be right here today. Whoever that may be, we want to pray for you. Hallelujah. If you would just repeat after me, Lord, I ask that you forgive me for my sin. I repent today and I ask you to enter my heart transform my mind equip me mold me to be a child of Christ I receive salvation today I confess with my mouth I believe in my heart that God sent his son Jesus who died on the cross and rose again so that I could be saved I receive salvation this morning Come on, everybody, say in Jesus' name. If you're in the room, we celebrate you. If you're online, we celebrate you. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to kingdom doings and kingdom dwellings. And if you're online, just click that link. There's a link that says, I want salvation. I receive salvation. Click that link so we can have somebody call and pray with you. If you're in the audience, I want you all to go to the reception desk at the end of service so Pastor Dio and I can pray with you. We will pray with you right there in that foyer to bring you in into the body of Christ. God has great things in store for us. And I'm honored that I learned who Christ was at a young age because it changed the trajectory of my life. Can we celebrate somebody's new life today? Come on and give him the praise. Come on and give him the honor. Come on and give him the honor. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. We thank you, Lord, for the new soul. We thank you for the kingdom of God growing. We thank you, Father God, for salvation and forgiveness this morning. And we bless you, God. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Welcome to Acceleration Church. If this is your first time here, amen, we have a special gift for you. Again, you'll find most of the things you need right at our reception center. Bring it a little bit closer. Thank you. Right at our reception center, you'll find everything you need from sanitizers to masks to prayer lists. Amen. You'll also find, amen, someone there ready to greet you to give you your free gift as a first-time visitor and guest here at Acceleration Church. If you're online and this is your first time logging in, welcome. I decree your life will never be the same. If you're in the house, your life will never be the same. God has something in store for you this morning. Amen. And if you want your free gift, click the link that I am a first time visitor and we'll get that gift over to you. Come on and bless the Lord as we take our seat this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Amen. That do so many things every day that we can't even count up the cost. Amen. But I'm so grateful for all of you that are biological mothers. Amen. That are natural mothers, that are spiritual mothers, that are women that may have not birthed a physical child, but you birth people into other areas and other ways. Amen. Amen. Some of you may be aunts biologically, but you had to step in and be a mother. Amen. And so we thank God for all the mothers in whatever form. Amen. You've entered motherhood. We are grateful for you. Come on and give God praise for our mothers this morning. Make sure you stop by and get a picture 
amen, on that beautiful back wall they have for us, you and your family can get a family picture, amen, before you leave this morning, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Let us quickly grab our Bibles, grab our Bibles, amen, we won't be long, we know that, amen, every mother has a reservation, if they don't, they better, amen, no mother should be cooking on today. Amen. So we want to make sure you get your reservation time in. Come on, moms. It's our day to be spoiled, somebody. Amen. If you ain't going to eat, you should be going to a nail salon or a mall. Come on, somebody. Or just sleep. I ask my husband for that every year. I just want to sleep. Give me the gift of rest. <laughs> that I don't have to have a knock on the door at 6 in the morning because Bella said I'm hungry. <laughs> at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. Amen. So some of you just want to rest. Whatever that may be, we want you to enjoy your Mother's Day. So thank you for coming to worship with us at 9 a.m. service. We do have 11 a.m. service as well. So if you're watching online and you're in the Orlando area, you can still get to church. Amen. Because we have a second service. Hallelujah. Come on and let's stand for the reading of the word. Amen. I'm going to read for you out of the books of Exodus chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 15 through 17. Amen. If you have your physical Bible, go ahead and open it. If you have your phone Bible, go ahead and go to the scripture. And those of you that don't, we have it on the screen. Amen. Those of you that are online, you should be able to see it as well. I'm going to read for you three verses, and I'm going to explain the context of the reading. Amen. For our understanding this morning. Verse 15, again, Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. We're going to read down to the 17th verse. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Safar, and the name of the other was Puah. And he said, when you do the duties of a midwife, someone say midwife, for the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stools, somebody say birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. I just want to stop right there really quick, even though this isn't my message, but it will be something I come back to since the beginning of time. The enemy's been after the sons. Since the beginning of the time, the enemy's been trying to take out men. We got to see what's going on. We talked about it a little bit. Was it last Sunday or Sunday before last when the Lord had me to pray over the men and God broke and it was a blessing. We've gotten response about that. But if you are a prayer warrior, if you know you've been called to intercession and prayer, pray for our men. Pray for our men, pray for our men, pray for our boys, pray for the next generation of boys. See, when, when, we, when we say we hear God, we got to hear what God is saying, both good and bad. And this is something that's been heavy in my spirit. And Daisy, um, one of our prayer weeks was dedicated just to the men. And we're going to do that again. Amen. Pastor Dio is working on something called Barbershop Talks. Well, he's going to be talking to the men about real life issues that men deal with, but they don't have an outlet. See, women, we talk, 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 talk. We post, we talk, we share, we talk. But a lot of times men have issues and pains, but they don't have a safe place to share. Amen. And so since the beginning of the time, the enemy's been after our sons, but we'll come back to that later. And so the scripture reads, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them. Somebody got to stand up for what's right. But they saved the male children alive. Come on and say amen for the reading of the word. You may be seated in the presence of God. As I take you through the scriptures, I want to give you some context. At this time, amen, the king of Egypt wanted to kill the male sons because he did not want that population of that particular demographic, of that particular race, which is the Israelites, to continue. So he thought if I kill the sons as they're coming out, I can stop birth from taking place. And so as I said earlier, this twofold, one is we got to know naturally the enemies after the sons, but spiritually we also have to understand that there is a target to try and stop what God has originated. Now I know today it's Mother's Day and we celebrate the mothers, but the Lord told me to share with you all today as we talk about mothers and the work of the mothers that there's mothers in the room there's mothers online that have not given birth naturally, biologically to a child, but there's mothers that have given birth to other things. 
There's mothers that have given birth to purpose. Come on, clap your hands if that's you. There's mothers that have given birth to dreams. Come on and clap your hands if that's you. There's mothers that have given birth to destiny. Come on and clap your hands if that's you. There's mothers that have given birth to purpose. Come on, clap your hands if that's you. There's people in the room, both women and men, that have given birth to something that in the birthing process, it was painful. But when you were able to push that thing into fruition, it turned around and blessed you. Can I talk to the mothers today that have birthed more than natural children? But God has a word this morning for mothers that have birthed something that has sustained them beyond their belief. There's mothers in the room that did not give children birth to biological children, but they had to take over somebody else's child. There's mothers in the room that had to adopt their cousins and their nieces, in some cases like me, their sisters and their brothers, that it was told to you, you got to be a mama before you even knew what it was to have labor pains. Can I talk to every mother? See, if I were just to minister this morning to moms that have given birth to biological children, I would lose about 50% of you huh? because there are some people in the room that know what labor pains are, even though they've never been in the hospital in the delivery room, huh? but they've been in a spiritual delivery room that has allowed them to birth deliverance for somebody else. Can I talk to some mamas in the room that may say, I didn't birth that many children, huh? but I have a whole lot of spiritual children that I prayed for, that I labored for, that I encouraged and God built them up because I was a spiritual mother to them so this morning I want to talk to mothers in different contexts and different positions <laughs> that naturally you have two children but spiritually you got 2,000 come on somebody clap your hands in the place I respect the mothers in the room that have given birth biologically but have also given birth spiritually see we will have a number of women that can raise their hand and say, I've given birth naturally. But we'll have all women raise their hand when I can say who's given birth spiritually and naturally. And can I not leave the men out today? I know Father Day is around the corner, but see, I come from a generation where, or not a generation, a family where my dynamics were very different. My mother, I grew up first in a household where there was a mom and a dad. Then a divorce happened. So then I became the child of a single mother. Then my mother married again. And then I was a child of both a mom and a dad, but a blended family. Come on, say, I've been, I've walked many walks. I've had the traditional, then I had the single mom, then I had the blended family. We had new brothers and sisters that my mother had to mother because it was a blended family and we came together under one roof and then my mother died. So then I experienced a father being a single parent raising us, going to the store to pick up feminine products because my mother was dead. So can I talk to some fathers in the room that have stood in the gap when mama couldn't do it that have stood in the gap for some nieces and nephews that have stood in the gap because you had to I want to talk to some people that have birthed some things come on say birth what I'm understanding is I deliver this message this morning and usually pastor Dio would preach and the Lord said he said daughter I want you to talk to mothers but he gave me this conviction he said I need you to talk to mothers that have birthed something naturally and spiritually. And he said, you're qualified to do it because you birth children naturally and spiritually and beyond children naturally and spiritually you birth some things in the earth like ministry like businesses like destiny like generational curses being destroyed like the mantle of prayer and so I need you to talk to everybody this morning and here's the message this morning um, is that God has put something inside of us to be able to help people push out what and who they're supposed to be the Lord said we need more mothers not just biologically, but spiritually. We need more people pushing out purpose. We need more people pushing out destiny. We need more people pushing out something that will live beyond them. That's how true change happens. When you're able to produce something in the earth that lives beyond you. Come on, somebody. And so in order to have more mothers, we need more midwives. Somebody say midwives. Somebody say midwives. In order to produce more mothers, we need more midwives. We just finished reading the text 
when the enemy tried to stop what God had ordained, he went to the midwives. <laughs> he didn't go to the mothers. He went to the midwives. He said, I need you to stop this from happening because he knows the enemy of the king knew that in order for birthing to take place, they needed a midwife to help it come to pass. So we need more midwives. We'll have more mothers birthing purpose if we have more spiritual midwives. Come on, raise your hand. Say, that's me. I'm a midwife. See, we have people wanting to produce, 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 be a boss, do this. But we have very little people that are there to help push. We want to be producers, but we don't want to be pushers. See, some of us are afraid that if I push them to their destiny, they're going to outrun me. But I'm talking to people this morning to understand that there is a place and a position in the church, in your family for midwives. Somebody say, I want to be a midwife. So today on Mother's Day, I want to raise more purpose pushers. <laughs> say purpose pushers. I already know you're going to produce purpose, but once you produce purpose, can I raise you up to be a purpose pusher? pusher can I get you to a place that say God did this for me and I want to help the next generation do the same thing God allowed me to birth the business now I want to raise more entrepreneurs God allowed me to break generational curses and get out of debt now I want to teach other people how to do the same it is time for midwives to stand up in the text we just read the king came in and he said kill the males symbolically what is happening in that text is a reminder that there is always an enemy trying to kill the original design that God has set forth. The first human God created was a man. So by original design, men are supposed to be here. But the king of Egypt wanted to stop it. So there has always been an attack on the original design. There's an attack on marriage and the original design that God put forth. There is an attack on your mind and the original design that God has put forth. Since the beginning of time, there has been a plot to kill what God originated. And so we have to now ask ourselves, what is my original purpose? What was my original design? If the enemy's trying to stop the original design, can I tell you that you must understand that life has a way of discouraging you so you don't fulfill that original purpose. Some of you know when you were children, you were so clear on what God wanted you to do. Someone asked you what you want to do when you grow up. You had about five things you can name because you were clear on your gift. You were clear on your purpose. But somehow in life, that list began to decrease and change and twist. And now when you ask someone what they want to be, I don't know. Because life has a way of twisting and discouraging you to believe that you truly can be who God called you to be. When I was younger, I wanted to be a superhero. But when things didn't turn out the way I thought they should, I thought I had no superpowers. But when I began to understand my original design, I said, oh my God, I had superpowers all along. I can see through walls. I can see through bodies. I can look at hearts. I can tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I can stop a bullet in mid-sentence through my prayer. I always had superpowers, but life made me think that I didn't. Some of you said you wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, but life has a way of discouraging you from being in your original purpose. That's why it's important that we have purpose pushers. Somebody say we need some midwives. See, what you must realize is that what you are carrying is so powerful. It's so successful. It's going to be such a life changer. That the enemy is trying to put strategies to prevent it from coming forth. Just like in the scripture we just read, the enemy used the king to make an ordinance to the midwives. See, the enemy is strategic. He's not just after you. He's after that person that he know has to give to help you push it out. He's after the leaders. He's after the spiritual advisors. That's why you see pastors falling. That's why you see them getting discouraged because the enemy's trying to prevent that pusher from pushing you into your purpose. The enemy has strategically or is trying, I'm going to say trying, somebody say trying. It's trying to put strategies in place to prevent your purpose from coming forth. And that's why 
we need midwives. Somebody raise your hand and say, I want to be a midwife. See, a midwife will push you <laughs> to give birth to your purpose in the face of adversity. Your midwife will push you to give birth in the face of your adversity. See, a real midwife, they will tell you, keep the doors of your business open even when others try to stop you. I remember during the pandemic, and you all can help me out, Frances came to me, and she doesn't mind me giving her testimony. A new entrepreneur built a salon. Pastor Dio went and did the ground opening. COVID rushed in, and she considered closing her shop altogether. I said, keep it open. Come on, I'm a midwife. I said, I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to believe with you that when everybody else closed down, you're going to have people coming in your salon because everybody else did not have faith. Can I tell you today, she's at full capacity, that she had to recreate some more room. She's looking for a new building. See, somebody need a midwife that will push you past your pain and past what you see and past the tree and everybody else was closing down but as a midwife I gotta tell you to keep going baby sustain through the rain and God will expand you we need midwives see midwives will tell you to keep that marriage under prayer when you wanted to get a divorce because that midwife can see down the road that midwife can see power in the unity of you two being together. Somebody needs a midwife. See, some of us are going and talking to our friends about our marriage. But I want to encourage you to talk to a midwife that can push that purpose out of you. And say, yeah, he get on your nerves, but get on your knees and pray. Yeah, I know you upset, but if you go on a fast for three days, baby, he'll turn that thing around. Can we get some midwives that know how to push purpose into realization? see a midwife oh I feel God in this place a midwife will tell you to put those drugs down because they know your history of addiction why your friends will tell you it's okay to have a puff but a midwife say but God has more that he's trying to get out of you and I don't need you to go back I need you to push so your purpose can come forth see a midwife understands that when you're called by God, you can't eat certain things. A midwives understand that when you're carrying something, you can't partake in places you used to partake. A midwife say, baby, listen, you can eat that later. But for these nine months, I need you to eat healthy. Because God is birthing something out of you that's going to live beyond you. We need some midwives that will stand up and tell the truth. That will stand up and say, push past the pain. Because there's purpose inside of you. See, the king came to the midwives. And he said, let the girls be born. Because he knew it would be easier transition. Whew. But stop the sons. Because that's more difficult. Why? Because it is the original design of God. See, a midwife will listen to the enemy. And have enough wisdom to say, okay. <laughs> but enough tenacity to say, don't listen to nothing they just said. <laughs> baby, I need you to get this baby out of you. <laughs> because it'll be easy for you to give up. <laughs> but God has purpose. He has his original design inside of you. See, a midwife understands. Woo, <sighs> that you're going to be heartbroken on the journey. But a midwife will be the person that's there to say, don't get bitter. I know she cheated on you, bruh. Don't get bitter. Because God got another woman on the side waiting for you. And right now, he's trying to develop you to be the Boaz that you called to be. And if you harden your heart, you won't receive all the love that God. Do we have some midwives? See, I grew up with midwives in my community that say listen baby you were the one I heard your mama died I heard your daddy died but you ain't gonna be like the rest of them baby go to school can I tell y'all had some midwives in my community that saw something inside of me that I was carrying and said just get through high school God is about to do something through you wipe them tears hold your shoulders back and push a little bit longer we need some midwives that can help people that are in the midst of pain to push past what they're feeling to what's on the inside of them see a midwife understands that what you're carrying 
when you're trying to push it out, it's going to cause some pain. See, see, a midwife understands that when you're carrying purpose, you're going to have to do some different stuff that may seem uncomfortable. See, a midwife will tell you to go apply for that job that on paper you ain't qualified for. A midwife will be the one to say, I saw they got a, a opening, baby. I think you can do that because I see it in you. And you say, well, I ain't never been in the baking industry, but they'll say, push, fill out the paperwork, push, redo your resume, push, put on this suit, push, and get to that interview because God is about to do something different through you because it's his original design. Midwives, real midwives, real midwives, we have a burden on us. Oh, I feel God. Midwives have a burden on them to make sure you push out your purpose. Midwives, and this, I want you to identify yourself in the description. If you're that person and you have a burden on you that you can't see, that person go a different way and you got this burden on you that I got to come on babe I'm checking on you that you that you finished that book I'm checking on you I noticed on your Instagram you said you were throwing in the towel I'm just checking on you because I don't want you to give up see midwives have a burden huh? they'll say I saw you the other day you look tired huh? can I help you with something may I, may I pray with you for a moment because I feel like you need somebody else huh, to help you push in this moment a midwife huh, has a burden on them huh, that if they say they're going to do something you help them stick to what they said and you encourage them along the way because everyone with purpose needs midwives see when you carry your purpose it gets hard when you carry your purpose it gets difficult when you carry your purpose you have labor pains when you carry your purpose you got to do stuff different sometimes you got to get secluded and so you got to understand that leaders need midwives purpose people need midwives dreamers need midwives and I'm calling for the midwives to rise up I'm calling for the midwives to stand up we need more coaches we need more cheerleaders we got enough people in the game can you just support can you cheer can you push me to get to the finish line there's enough people running can I get some cheerleaders because I'm trying to get to the end but it's getting difficult come on we need some midwives I love my position 40 years I worked harder than anybody I knew at minimum I have three jobs at minimum three all my life but can I tell you I love being in this position that if I never get another award if I never get another speaking engagement Olive can tell you I got two speaking engagement invitations the other day. I said, call Crystal, give them the huh. Because look, I like the position of training. I like the position of pushing. I need her to get out her comfort zone and go preach the word. Cause I preached the word for over 20 years. Now God has me focused on acceleration church. Cause I see some ministers in the audience. I see some prophets sitting down. I see some doctors coming. I see some lawyers. I love this position to push you into your destiny. We need some midwives that have a burden of not letting purpose die, but letting it rise up so that God can get the glory. See a real midwife. If you fail, they feel like they failed. A real midwife hurts when they see you backing up off your purpose. Can I see many of y'all in here? Do I got some midwives that understand that pain? See a real my real midwife, if you fell at the call, they won't talk about you. They'll get on their knees and pray for you. See a real midwife, when they see you backing up, they'll say, baby, keep going. I know it's tough, but I'll walk with you through this. We need some midwives that understand that there's people carrying purpose, but purpose is painful. Oh, can I hear y'all? Come on, say purpose is painful. It's not always beautiful. It can be painful. But if you have the right midwife next to you, they can teach you how to push through the pain. 
I know I'm talking spiritual. I want to give you a natural example as I were preparing this message. I remember when I first became a mother. I was, y'all doing real good. I'm closing. Just keep playing with me. My son, I went into labor in our home. My husband and I got in the truck heading to the hospital all the way from Seminole County to Orange County. 8 a.m. in the morning. Rush hour traffic on a Monday. I still, you know, mothers, come on, y'all never forget that day. While we were in the truck, my water broke. Those of you that know when your water breaks, you go into some excruciating labor pains. Monday morning at 8 a.m., I went through those labor pains until Tuesday morning because for some reason he wasn't ready to come into the earth. And so for those of you that know, again, spiritual, when you're birthing something you can't eat, sometimes you got to go on a fast. <laughs> and so when you're birthing naturally, that's why they tell you to fast because when you're birthing, you got to be, you got to be ready. Everything got to move out the way. So I had not eaten for 30 hours because we're in Tuesday, midday now. I have labor pains coming so intense that the nurses are coming in my room saying, are you okay? My labor pains were so intense, my poor husband's wrist was almost broken half because every time I had a pain, I grabbed his wrist. I wanted him to feel that pain with me. <laughs> labor pains were so bad, I bit my godmother because she reached her hand out. Ah. I was in so much pain. I remember the vision God gave me of my son before I went into labor. He said he's going to be a great man of God. He showed me my son in a pool and he said, look again. And underneath my son, the Bible was holding him up. He said he's going to live the word. He's going to sleep the word. Can I tell you, this boy prays every night for a minimum an hour. So there was purpose inside of me, but with purpose comes pain. See, people tell you the end of the story, but Acceleration Church, we're going to tell you the whole story. So you're not surprised when the pain comes. You're not caught off guard when it hurts a little bit. We're going to give you the big picture that it takes faith and it takes work. It takes all the fruits of the Spirit and then some. So I'm in labor 30 hours, had not eaten. I finally started dialing it, so they said take it to the delivery room. I went into the delivery room on the delivery table. Had not eaten for 30 hours, so I'm shaking because I'm famished. And while I'm at my weakest, my midwife is saying, at this moment, I need you to push. And I'm saying, y'all ain't going to give me no water, no crackers, no none. You, What strength will I have to push out this boy? My midwife said, I'm going to be there with you. So she's standing by my bed. My husband is standing by my bed. And my, whip, my midwife is talking to me and telling me to push. And I'm saying to her, it's painful. Then I finally tell her, I can't do this no more. I'm crying. I'm in pain. I say, I can't. I told my midwife, I can't do this anymore. She looked me in my eyes. She said, yes, you will. My midwife grabbed the sheet off the bed. She said, you're going to do this, baby. We're going to do this together. And see, my midwife had experience because, because she had helped other people birth. So she said, I know it's painful, but it's possible. I know it hurt, but you can do it. We've done this before. See, a midwife is trained in labor and delivery. A midwife knows that it's going to hurt your baby, but it's possible. I know nobody in your family ever done this, but it can be done. Just know that I'm here with you. I can't push the baby out, but I can push purpose out of you. My midwife grabbed the sheet off the bed. She tied it into a knot. She said, I'm going to do this with you. She gave me the end of the sheet. She had the other end. She said, this is what I want you to do, daughter. She said, I know he's almost coming out. Because when it becomes the most painful, that's when he's about to come forth. So I'm going to need you to push with everything within you. She said, and I know you're weak. I know you're tired. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. I know 
you're weak, baby. I know you're tired. I know it hurts. But there's more inside of you. And when you get your weakest, your midwife should be able to say, I'm going to do this with you. So she said, I want you to push. But she said, when you feel weak, just begin to pull on me. And when you pull on me, it's going to give you the strength you need to, to push this thing out. So I got in position and I was shaking. She said, hold on tight. And she said, when I say push, you push. But pull on me and I'm going to give you the strength you need. Because you got to birth this thing. She said, push and I push. She said, push and I push. She said, push and I pulled on her. And I pushed for the last time. And my son came forth. There is something on the inside of you that requires pushing. It is very painful. It does not seem possible. But there are some midwives that I need to stand up. I need some midwives that will rise up so we can produce more mothers. Mother's Day is a celebration of us getting through the pain and doing what was necessary. Mothers are sacrificial, but we would not have mothers if we didn't have midwives. And don't get me wrong, I understand as you read further in the scripture, the midwives told the king, they did a little white lie. He said, why you didn't kill the baby boys? They said, well, these type of individuals, somebody gonna catch this, I'm trying to be correct politically. Because he was after a particular race. They told the king, they said, this generation of women, this, this race of women, read down this, this 18th, 19th verse. They said, these race of women, they didn't need a midwife. They pushed through the pain. So I understand we have different types of people. We have some people that know how to push in the midst of pain. That there's a pandemic outside, but you still producing. <laughs> there's a pandemic happening, but you still squatting and let it go. But we also have some women that get to that point. They feel like giving up. So I want to talk to women that know how to birth in the midst of pain. And I want to talk to women that know how to get others through it. Because if you that bad, can you sign up and be somebody's midwife? If you feel like you don't need help, can you help somebody else? If you that bold, can you stand in the gap for the next one? We need midwives. We need those that have achieved. Those that have pushed out purpose. Those that have broken generational curses. Come on, is that you? You broke generational curses. Any of you were the first in your family. Come on, men and women. Any of you pushed out something that was so painful it seemed impossible, but today you see it. I need you all to sign up to be some midwives. You don't have to tell me, but tell God that, Lord, I know there's more purpose to be released in the earth. There's more mothers that are wanting to push out purpose, but they need a midwife that's dedicated. I love my midwife. I went and looked up her name and sent her flowers because she didn't just stand and say, you can do it. Go ahead. When I said I can't do this anymore, she didn't say send her to surgery. Honey, she got on that bed with me. She said, we're going to do this together because when you fail, I fail. When you succeed, I succeed. When you push out purpose, I've done my purpose. We need some midwives to stand up and see your purpose in the midst of someone else. Come on and stand to your feet. I want to pray today for the men and women that are carrying something so great that is painful, is heavy. You got back pains, you can't sleep, you confused, it's terrifying because it's your first time. I want to talk to those that are carrying purpose. Come on, if you're carrying purpose, raise your hand. If you're carrying purpose, I know you got some labor pains. Can I be your midwife this morning? I want to pray for you today so that we can push that purpose 
out of you. Can I get Sonia to come? Come on. Can I get Cherie to come? Just each one of you stand right here. I need y'all to help me pray. Come on, we're going to be your midwife this morning. Because I want you to get that purpose out of you into fruition. That fear will go away. That the pain will begin to subside. That you'll get to a place that, my God, it's been a year. And I went through something so serious I never thought I would be here. But I believe in you. Pastor Dion, I believe in you. We believe in your purpose. We believe in your dream. Don't give up now. Push. Come on, let us pray. Father, we pray today for those that have purpose on the inside of them. Those that are carrying purpose, God, deep down in them. Many of them have great dreams. And the dreams are so big, it scares them. Some of them have ministry inside of them. Business inside of them. God, they have got the ability to break generational carcasses. To be the first in their family. The first on their job. The first in their community. God, many of them got that must be pushed out so this morning as their midwives we say push 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 and when it gets difficult when you get weak know that God has someone there praying for you interceding for you believing for you because what God has inside of you must live it cannot die the earth needs it the heaven needs to sing about it so push a little further, push a little longer, and know that God will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Come on, can I get some men wives to shout push? Come on, can I get some men wives to shout push? Come on, can I get some men wives to shout push? You got to release it. Your purpose is needed. You are needed. And when it gets its most painful, that's when you're on the verge of releasing it. And I want you to know today, you are not alone. You are not alone. You have some intercessors here that's trained in labor and delivery. You have some cheerleaders. All they know to do is just cheer you on. You have some coaches, Pastor Dion, that will give you the play to the game. We'll tell you what's necessary to win. On my watch, I won't let you lose. On our watch, we won't let you abort what God has put inside of you. On our watch, we won't let you give up. Because we see greatness in you. Don't give up on that marriage. Don't give up on that child. Don't give up on that family member. Don't give up on that business. Don't give up on that idea. Don't give up on that invention. Don't give up. Push. Because your purpose is needed in the earth. Yes, the enemy's trying to plot against you, but you got midwives in position that got both feet planted. Pull on us, pull on us, pull on us when you get weak, pull on us when you feel like giving up. You will not lose. God is surrounded you by people that will push you into your purpose. Come on. Young lady right here with the t-shirt on. You're standing between two boys. I need you to come, baby. Today is your day. Walk with her, Serena. Come on. He knows your name. And the Holy Spirit is all over you. Today is your day. God said you needed this word. Come closer. Because it's been a tough season. I see the tears. See, I see them naturally, but God saw them spiritually. That's why he said, call her out. It's been a tough season. You felt like you were by yourself, and it was easier to give up. But as a midwife today, baby, I need you to push just another day. I need you to push just another week, because what's inside of you must live. God said, you're going to get through this pain. Put your hand in her belly. You know what to do. Put your hand in her back, Sheree. Let's help her push. Come on, you got greatness inside of you. 
God said you will be delivered today and you will be set free. Come on and push. Come on and push. Breakthrough is here in the name of Jesus. The midwives got you. Release now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Be glorified. Come on and minister. I need you to minister. Break your She has a red pants, Breaker. Let's go to war.